Let's face it, when it comes to the crypto industry, there is quite a lot of hyperbole. One such term is Blockchain 3.0, and there are currently two projects that are adopting this narrative. They are EOS and Cardano, and they are both trying to develop a next generation blockchain. Yet, how do these two compare? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you that comparison, impartially and concisely, objectively and precisely. Now, as is usual, I need to cover my ass before moving ahead. So firstly, what I say is for educational purposes. I'm not an investment advisor, and I encourage all of you to do the deed, that being your own research, of course. Also, if you're new to the Bureau, my name is Guy, and I want to wish you a warm welcome. I release these regularly, so I encourage you to tap that subscribe button and smack that bell while you're down there. It's a great way to stay updated. Now then, let's get back to business, shall we? Let's start off by looking at what these projects are. Both Cardano and EOS are open source projects that want to provide scalable and decentralized networks that will handle deploying decentralized applications or dApps. These projects also support smart contract functionality. EOS got its start back in 2017 when Brendan Bloomer founded Block One, and which serves as the company that develops for the EOS project. Cardano was launched in 2015 by Input Output Hong Kong, or IOHK. The company was founded by Charles Hoskinson, who was previously a part of the Ethereum development team. Now, given that these projects have similar use cases and initiatives, they share a lot of similarities. However, there are also some key differences. We'll start, though, with the use cases EOS and Cardano have to offer. One of the biggest use cases for EOS is its interoperability capabilities. The project wants to improve communication protocols, which allow blockchains to talk to each other instead of being isolated. This is the ideal solution for industries like healthcare and supply chains that need to communicate with one another and remain transparent without revealing protected information. Cardano has a similar use case, its blockchain allows for end-to-end -end tracking while also providing low, predictable and transparent costs. The Cardano project focuses on offering sustainable and interoperable decentralized applications. Now, let's switch gears away from what these coins plan to do and talk about why these two projects consider themselves to be blockchain 3.0. With the advent of Bitcoin over a decade ago, we were introduced to blockchain 1.0. A few years later, Blockchain 2.0 was ushered in through the development of smart contracts like the ones used on Ethereum. Even though the industry has experienced significant advances, the technology has shown certain limitations. With Blockchain 3.0, projects are focusing on solving problems like scalability and interoperability. As we already know, these are two issues that EOS and Cardano are focusing on by implementing algorithms and protocols that provide instant transactions and privacy. EOS is just one example of the next generation of blockchains. It's designed to resolve issues that exist within Ethereum-based decentralized apps like slow transaction speeds. Along those same lines, Cardano is a blockchain project that focuses on sustainability, interoperability, governance and scalability. Cardano's process relies on superior research and protocol development, which allows it to stand out from the rest of the blockchain 3.0 crowd. While scalability and interoperability are something EOS and Cardano hope to achieve, their blockchains have different methods through which they achieve consensus. For example, Cardano will use a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism called Ouroboros. The project recently released a validator to confirm wallet amounts before its testnet staking method moves over to the Cardano mainnet. On the other hand, EOS uses delegated proof-of-stake, or DPoS. The biggest difference between these two very similar consensus mechanisms is the number of nodes that uphold consensus. Through DPoS, EOS has a set number of nodes or delegates, while Cardano's POS has no such limitation. EOS sets its delegate limit at 21, who are chosen through a voting process. These delegates are called block producers. 
With DPoS, anyone can become a block producer on the network, providing, of course, that they meet the project criteria. In terms of network statistics, EOS has a theoretical maximum throughput of 4,000 transactions per second, although the number is closer to 40 right now. Cardano has yet to launch its mainnet, but they have claimed that once launched, it will have a capacity of 250 TPS. Although Charles Hoskinson has claimed that with the addition of sidechains down the line, this number could move to about 5,000. Let's move away from consensus mechanisms now and take a look at these projects and their respective ICOs. Starting with EOS, the project ICO lasted for an entire year, raising a little over $4 billion. Yes, you heard that right. Because of its hugely successful ICO, EOS gained a lot of attention, but not all of it was positive. Many claim that while the project held an uncapped ICO for the duration of a year, there was no minimum viable product at the time, merely just a white paper and a whole host of promises. There were also many that wondered whether the EOS ICO fell foul of the SEC guidance on securities. However, it seems as if the project is out of the woods for now. Quite recently, Block One and the SEC reached an agreement in which the project will pay a $24 million one-time fee based on the sale of its ERC-20 token. At its launch, EOS did not have a blockchain of its own, so the project's token was launched as an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum blockchain. However, in June of 2018, EOS migrated over to its mainnet native token. Currently, the project has a circulating supply of almost 940 million tokens, while boasting a total supply of a little over 1 billion. One last thing to note about the EOS token is that it does not have a max on its supply limit. The project uses inflation as a way to fund its transactions. However, inflation rates have been capped at 5%. Similar to EOS, Cardano had a pre-sale for its ADA token for nearly two years. At the time of the sale, ADA was sold on average for a quarter of a penny. During the ADA pre-sale, the project sold 26 billion of its 45 billion total token supply. Both EOS and Cardano have experienced the full vagaries of the bull and bear markets. Prices remain depressed, but EOS holders are looking to growth of the ecosystem and Cardano adherents are excited for its mainnet launch. Oh, and a quick side note here. I've done separate individual reviews for both EOS and Cardano, which I've linked to below. Feel free to check them out if you want more in-depth overviews on both. Anyways, Let's now take a look at their broader organizational structures, shall we? EOS and Cardano are similar in their organizational strategies in that both have companies that do the vast majority of their developing. EOS has Block One, while Cardano has IOHK. At this time, Cardano is handled by three different entities, one of which is the previously mentioned Input Output Hong Kong. The others are Emergo and the Cardano Foundation. IOHK is a technology firm contracted with the project for development work through 2020 and likely beyond. The second piece of the Cardano project, the Cardano Foundation, was founded to promote Cardano, while Emergo is the startup incubator. Emergo's primary objective is to onboard new organizations onto the Cardano network. While these three entities handle Cardano, the voice, and often the face, of the project is Charles Hoskinson. Hoskinson brings credibility to Cardano due to his past work with Ethereum and often provides updates and news of the project himself. EOS, on the other hand, has its EOS Venture Capital. This part of EOS provides businesses with the capital they need to get their projects off the ground. The companies that EOS chooses to help are those that already work closely with EOS developers building on the EOS platform. Also, Part of EOS is the aforementioned Block 1, which is the development portion of the project. One very notable member of Block 1 is the CTO Dan Larimer. For those who don't know, Dan is quite a veteran in the space. He founded one of the first DEXs, BitShares, as well as Steam, the blockchain-based social network. EOS and Cardano have both been busy drawing in other companies to develop relationships that push for adoption and growth. While EOS is focused on bringing in entrepreneurs and developers to build new decentralized apps on its platform, the project is also working with existing companies. For example, 
EOS recently partnershiped with Tappatalk, a mobile forum application that boasts 300 million users throughout 186 countries around the world. The company shared in early 2019 that it would use EOS to power its reward systems. Tappatalk hopes to incentivize its members to engage across multiple forums by monetizing its rewards. Of course, introducing EOS to 300 million users on the Tappatalk platform might also be a way to drive user adoption. Another company EOS is working with is OneChain, which is another blockchain project that targets interoperability. Integrating with OneChain allows EOS to interact with other communities and continue to drive adoption within the industry. Cardano has developed several partnerships since its establishment, but it's made inroads with a few organizations recently that have raised the cachet of the project itself. Recently, Cardano established a partnership with Coty, an enterprise platform that specializes in the fintech industry. With Coty, Cardano can now allow merchants around the world to accept ADA as a form of payment, as it instantly enables settlement across 35 different fiat currencies. Another partnership that garnered a lot of attention for the Cardano project was New Balance. Together, the companies have created New Balance RealChain, which is a platform that relies on the Cardano blockchain to validate the authenticity of certain shoe models. RealChain uses a physical card along with an internal chip that users can scan with their phone to confirm that the New Balance shoes they have are authentic. And one last partnership I want to mention involves the recent developments with the Georgian government and education sectors. The project has teamed up with multiple universities within the country to use its blockchain technology to store, track and validate educational criteria such as degrees and certifications. It has also discussed additional uses of its blockchain with the Georgian government such as supply chain management, fintech support and the improvement of government processes. It's clear that these two projects are doing a great job of establishing partnerships with key companies to help drive adoption. But where are their blind spots? Well, one blind spot for EOS is simply due to its nascency. Since it's a relatively newish project, it doesn't yet have the developers and users that other more prominent cryptocurrencies have. As a result, there are fewer dApps on the EOS platform. Additionally, some detractors of EOS suggest that the project is semi-centralized since it only allows for 21 block producers on its network. Doing so creates a small group of people who essentially have the ability to control the EOS blockchain. Of course, EOS has also faced some difficulty on the scaling front recently. Some dApps have clogged the network and led to CPU overuse. Anyways, similar to EOS, but not for the same reasons, Cardano does not have a lot of usable decentralized apps on its network. However, where EOS is simply due to a lack of popularity, Cardano's is due to the fact that the project has not finalized its smart contract and token standards. Another disadvantage of using Cardano is its slow development processes. The implementation of released products and features often far exceeds the amount of time the project announces on its roadmap. In that time, government rules and regulations can change, along with the environment surrounding the entire crypto industry, which could wind up resulting in different requirements for the project itself. Now, wrapping up, I would say that these are two unique and exciting projects that just need to get out of their own way. EOS needs to find a way to market itself better, something only it can do. If it can find a way to overcome centralization concerns and network congestion, it has the potential to be a top DAP development blockchain. Along the same lines, Cardano needs to find the necessary motivation to move a little faster. Being thorough in the development process is completely understandable. However, it becomes incredibly frustrating to see a roadmap date being constantly pushed back. There is plenty of potential driving both these products, as evidenced by the recent partnerships both have formed with strong companies. I believe there is room for both Cardano and EOS to succeed in the current market, so long as they can fix the problems that plague them. And that, my fellow crypto fans, is my comparison of EOS and Cardano. But I do need some feedback. What do you guys think of the two projects? Anything that I missed out? Leave your comments below. Also, if this video was to your satisfaction, then let me know your reaction. Smash up that like button and don't forget to subscribe. See you later, folks.